I work for Centerpoint Energy, and we are a gas and electric utility, and we are spread throughout eight states. I am the Risk Connect Administrator for the company, and I work specifically in the safety department. The issue that we had was what many companies might have when they're acquired by another one, right? So Centerpoint acquired Vectron, and the problem was that we needed to all have the same system in order to intake our incidents and then produce an output. And so what we did is um, I reached out to uh, my CSM and we started looking at how we were going to uh, create something that would help us to be able to uh, produce those results. So before we had what we would call phase one of our implementation, um, we, we had two separate HR um, systems, because you think about companies coming together and you've got two completely different systems. And so what we had to do was we had to switch over those feeds so that we would have the right feed uh, coming in. And so what that allows us to do when you bring in um, a data feed from another system is, especially HR, then you have automated um, information happening. So for example, you'll be able to say, you won't have to, you won't have to change your employee's job title. All of that is going to update as they change. And so that's a significant benefit to um, you know, integrating another data feed. And we did this with our fleet system as well, because as you all know, for utilities, we need rates. And so in order to get rates, you have to have worker hours and fleet miles. And then uh, those rates then are something that's it's very important to our, our company to understand how well we're doing and how, um, what our performance is in those areas for motor vehicle incidents and, and injuries. But we also um, rolled out our Good Catch program. And, um, and then in addition, we recently started um, creating a portal through digital communities or digital experiences uh, to capture our contractor good catches. Well, we have a traditional portal for the intake of incidents, and then we've, as we have a, um, a new portal that's called Digital Experiences that we're, we're going to be using for our contractor portal. In addition, we moved to Lightning this year from Classic, and we use the EHS uh, application, and then we have another group in our company that uses ERM. Because I'm an admin, I get into the weeds quite a bit, and so the features that I like the best are around being able to create workflows, email notifications, uh, new objects. I love to create reports and dashboards. And then to, to, to take those uh, reports and dashboards and show others how um, they can use that to leverage their own answers to problems. The results that we have produced come in terms of saved time and saved money. So for example, we, by using the intake portal, are able to eliminate paper trails. You have an option, of course, you could still upload that paper question or form, but it's not required. And so that means that an employee can go right to the portal, the link to the portal, and enter an incident. And what was happening historically is that you would have a handoff of information. So you'd have 
uh, maybe an employee who told a supervisor, who told somebody else, who then told someone in safety. So you'd have this trail of touch points. And so it reduces a lot of um, wasted time. In addition, one of the important aspects that I want to state is that by making this decision, we were able to save um, quite a bit of money. And really, you know, we had to decide. It wasn't that one system was so much better than another. It was more about for the leader and the leadership to understand what it was going to make, what kind of difference it would make in terms of dollars and time. Well, the results are always interesting and, and absolutely affect what we're going to do in the future because it helps lay out a framework of what we have and what we're able to produce and then we go back to the stakeholder and say, okay, how can we help you? What do you need? How can we really um, examine uh, and make good decisions around what our problems are and then move forward. And then it's really important that we then talk to our um, Risk Connect community, and really it is a community, and that we reach out and we discuss this with them as well. So I'm going to contact my CSM. I'm going to open up a ticket, and that's how we're then going to start to develop the next project. And actually, by partnering with Risk Connect on what we, we want to do or what we think we want to do, um, that can also flip where we end up in the long run, and it will produce better results. The keys to success with implementation start with creating a business plan. and in that you're going to show your stakeholders what your cost savings is so that they'll understand what the benefit is for the company. Then you want to, once you get their buy-in, and you will because the numbers don't lie, math is truth, then you will be able to create um, some technical specs, and I recommend that you create your own technical specs before you continue, because that way you can really help your partnership with Risk Connect. You can help them understand what it is that you're looking for, and then they can make recommendations based on their knowledge and um, success, past success. So it's reaching out to your corporate leadership, your company leadership, I should say, getting buy-in, creating your technical specs, making sure you have a plan and a strategy in place, and that includes user adoption. And then once you start working on that project, it's really important to make sure that everyone knows that you're working on this. So our project manager, on the center point side made sure that we celebrated our kickoff. And I think what that did for everyone was it, it brought them into the loop. It, they became aware of what we were doing, why we were doing this, and how their voice is important in the whole process. And so that was really important. And as we went along, we included the voice of the customer we had surveys, we followed up, we had meetings about those surveys because we wanted to make sure that everyone was heard and not only heard, but that we maybe made some adjustments along the way to make sure that uh, we were able to get what we all needed. Now, of course, you also have to have a very uh, structured plan and you have to have sign off on those plans or else you're going to have Right, your scope is going to creep and you don't want that. Um, but you can create a phase two and a phase three and that's what we did. Well, I'll give you an example of how much I like to work with Risk Connect. I, as soon as this um, latest conference came up, I went out to LinkedIn and I said, I can't wait to see my favorite people. And <laughs> 
And I had a few people from Centerpoint say, I saw your post, and I said, it's true. I can't wait to see my favorite people uh, there at Risk Connect. And, okay, not all of them, right? I have some other favorite people, right? My family um, and at my company. But my partnership with Risk Connect is critical to our success. And I would say that when you join in with Risk Connect, or if you're currently working in Risk Connect, you, you should be reaching out to them weekly in some way, shape, or form. That could be opening a ticket, it could be a phone call to your CSM, it could be a meeting, and just an email to follow up or check in on or um, say hello. And um, so, yeah, it's really important. And I, um, I just love my Risk Connect um, partnership and friends. If there was one word that would describe our relationship, I, I would say that, you know, I think of a heart. I know that sounds sort of like, you know, love, friendship. I'm sorry, there's just not one word. You can't sum up. Um, I can't sum up that feeling that I get about my Risk Connect um, friends. Um, I just feel like they're people that I can reach out to no matter what. So the advice I would give you if you're in a same situation uh, is I would try a similar path. It was successful for us and it was interesting because what we thought would be successful and move things along wasn't always successful. So what we thought would be successful would be showing Risk Connect because it's so cool, right? You show the platform, you show the report, you show how easy it is. It's uh, user-friendly. As an admin, I am going in and creating what needs to be created in a timely manner. But yes, that was important, but what really moved it along was creating the business case for leaders, for them to see what it meant in terms of dollars and cents and time. And so I would start with creating your business case, and then I would, at, probably at the same time, I would partner with Risk Connect to keep them in the loop of what's going on, what, your, what the effort is that you're making, because they always have great ideas. I mean, that's the thing is, you're, you're partnering with Risk Connect because they know, they've been through it, so they can help. And I think you just keep that line open, you keep the communication going, because they may say something that you, you didn't even think about, like, hey, we can stop by or we can do a demo on X, Y, and Z, or you just never know what they're gonna come up with.